So this is my Moogfest uh, circuit bend. Looks pretty normal on the outside, I guess, except for this obvious circuit board on the top. This is an Atmel X Mega A3 BU explained board. Um, it's cheaper than an Arduino, which a lot of people like to use Arduinos, but it's cheaper. Has a built-in screen, is way more powerful, has a lot more I.O., and is uh, pretty much win-win in every way. It's just a really awesome board. Uh, the only thing is it's a little harder to program. You can't just program it over your USB like an Arduino because it doesn't have a built-in bootloader, unless I made one. Uh, you program it with a uh, either JTAG or PDI programmer provided by Atmel. Or you could build your own. Um, Lady Ada has a tutorial on how to do that. But anyways, so this board is powered by the batteries from the DD6, 9 volts as per the rules. Coming from the Atmel dev board. And they are going to this Intersil Matrix 0. Point cross point uh, MEMS chip, which is pretty much a matrix full of switches. And via these wires here, connected to the micro, I could open and close switches and connect various points of the matrix to each other. And um, for this matrix, I needed to get 5 volts. So I got 5 volts out of this LM385. And that also powers the microcontroller. And the microcontroller actually runs off 3.3 volts, but it has a built-in regulator, so I saved a little money on that. Um, pretty basic LM3805 uh, circuit around that guy. What else? These are all the wires for all the various matrix connections, and pretty much what they're doing is they are just connecting the RAM samples and pretty much mangling the bits of the various samples. We'll hear that in a bit. Um, I looked at the circ at the out the pinouts for these guys, both on a scope and a meter and everything, and I just realized that this guy, all it does is it's it controls the screen and it controls the buttons. That's all this guy does. This guy, all he is is the RAM. It stores all the samples for uh, all the various sounds. On the other side of the board, there is another chip, and that's the main CPU. And that's a little surface mount chip, and you can mess with that, but didn't really want to mess with that. What else? We have here, here's the, um, I traced these back. These are the uh, protection, or so the conversion for the pads. The pads have a piezo disc on a big metal plate with rubber on the top. So these just uh, pretty much, I guess, bias the signal. There's a, a Zener diode just to help cut it down because um, piezo could put out a lot of voltage, but you don't need all that voltage. So that goes into the micro on the other side of the board. What else? So I wanted a way to get a, a tempo out of this guy. So I thought for a while, how do I get the tempo out? And then I realized, all right, there's an LED on the front that blinks to the tempo of the beat. So pretty much, I hooked up these diodes to the LED, because there's two LEDs. There's one LED that starts the measure, and then there's one LED for every beat uh, in that measure. But you need them both, because if you only get the beginning of the measure, then you miss all the other beats, and if you only get the beats, you miss the beginning of the measure. So I combine those two signals via these little diodes, and they go out to this guy. And now I could sync that with my um, simple step sequencer that I built. I could sync it with my Korg Volkas. A uh, pretty simple way to sync this DD6, and it works quite well. All right, let's turn this guy on. So you notice how the microcontroller turns on. Right now, there's no software telling anything to go on the screen yet. And this guy turns on. Right now, this is a stock DD6. Nothing, um, no sounds are different. Play sounds. And uh, here are the LEDs I mentioned before.
So those are giving out the sink out for me. So right now I have uh, three buttons right here just showing off the basic software that the firmware that I've got going so far. This button resets the uh, the DD6, resets the matrix and disconnects everything back to stock. This button connects everything and it's freaking it's chaos. And this button just does a few changes. Not every sound is affected, but I'll show you what which sounds are. So first, let's do the subtle one. Let's find one that has a, a change. Okay. So here's a stock DD6 sound. Here's one little connection on the matrix, adding a little fuzz. So here's regular. Back to regular. Connection. Cool little uh, distortion fuzziness. And now for the complete chaos. This is a... Uh, can't really control it. So, um... There's nothing. Kind of just playing itself now. I press the button to restore it back and it's still going. Alright, that ended. Let's um add a little subtle fuzziness. And let's get a sound going and see if we can hear something cool. Alright, that's the fuzziness of your stock. Kind of glitchy, kind of cool. And back to chaos. intent for the next step is to be able to plug in USB into an iPad via a camera connection kit and um, control everything in the matrix and uh, control all the connections. Currently where the uh, iPad app is at, see here this is all the possible connections you can make in the, uh, the matrix chip and um, pretty much you would press a button and it would turn green to let you know that it's connected. You can press as many as you want. You can press them all. Don't press them all. And um, you could either have it send one at a time, or you can make a bunch and then send it all in one go. You could also save a preset on the microcontroller, and you'll be able to eventually, with the screen, cycle through various presets that you like. I think it's pretty cool. And a little MIDI, MIDI panic because it's always fun in case things screw up. Name your presets over there. A little preset name. I'll name it uh, Mogan. And um, right now it's not functioning, but yep, eventually. And by eventually, I mean the end of February. <laughs> 